messages at 2 a.m. talking about what you doing. I'm sleep. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Tiffy Starchild and I am so excited to finally, I have been waiting to make this video reviewing Frozen 2 which just came out in theaters on this past Friday, November 22nd. So I have a really, really, truly amazing friend that invited me to the red carpet premiere of Frozen 2 in Hollywood. That was about two weeks ago. So I have been holding on to my feelings about this movie this entire time and to be honest, I'm just not built for that type of stress. And as a fair warning, there are gonna be spoilers all up through this review. There are so many good things that I want to talk about. So it's been six years since the release of the first Frozen movie that came out in 2013 and unlike some Disney sequels where even though years can actually pass like The Incredibles, 13 years passed before we saw the continuation of that story but it picked up right where the previous movie left off. That's not the case in Frozen 2. It actually has been six years for these characters as well. And for me it was really great because I loved seeing how the characters grew and how they changed. The biggest one for me was definitely how Anna changed. She's more calm, she's way more mature and so much more confident in herself. And you can see the way that she moves throughout the kingdom, the way that she interacts with the Arendellians. Arendelle Knights? I'm not gonna do this right now. With the people of Arendelle, she's just grown so much. She's not the wide-eyed, naive person that she was in the first film. She let Elsa know, I braved the North Mountain. I saved you from my ex-boyfriend. I survived a frozen frozen heart that who gave me? Who gave me the frozen heart, Elsa? She didn't do that last part, but that's what I threw in because I felt that in my spirit. Olaf, who was my favorite character in the first Frozen, is somehow even funnier in this film. We see a new character in Captain Matthias. He was funny. He had very subtle moments that showed a lot of his character. To be honest, Kristoff, to me, didn't really change that much as a character. His relationship with Anna has obviously grown, so there's that change that he's experienced, but he's still the same type of personality. They gave him the best line in the entire movie. Him and Sven, they're racing and they're trying to rescue Anna before she gets crushed by the rock giants, the earth giants. They threw something at her and they're trying to save her and he scoops her up right in the nick of time and he just looks at her and he says, I'm here. What do you need? That's it. That's the fairy tale right there. No drama, no red flags, no text messages at 2 a.m. talking about what you doing. I'm sleep. And they actually gave my boy a proper song. And thank you, Jonathan Groff, voice of an actual angel. It's so good. It's so something very different. Lost in the Woods. If you're not going to see the movie, listen to the song on Spotify because the song stands on its own. But the sequence in the movie, they play a lot of respect to the, to the hair bands of the 80s. It's this love ballad. He has a bang flip and he even has a moment where he's like pumping on his chest. And the music in this movie is everything. I was super curious how they were gonna top let it go and if I'm being completely honest I don't think that they did but I also don't think that they needed to. Let it go was epic and just world changing. It was Elsa shedding the expectations that have been placed on her all of her life, the restrictions. It was the first step of her journey towards being herself. So Into the Unknown which for this movie starts their adventure and their journey that represents something different for Elsa. There's longing. I need to know what's out there because it's just calling from deep inside me. It didn't have to be on the big scale of Let It Go. It was a different moment in Elsa's life and I think they played that really well in this movie. So the, the song doesn't compete with Let It Go but it's the next logical step on Elsa's journey and in her development as a character. Show Yourself on the other hand, that song Oh my goodness, she sings with the memory of her mother and even the second time I went to go see this film, knowing what was coming, I was still not prepared. It's just one of the most powerful, beautiful moments. For me personally, Let It Go didn't mean a lot to me as a song and I explained when I did the Frozen 2 trailer reaction that I had just been out of a terrible breakup, terrible life-changing breakup at the time. So Let It Go had a specific a, you know, moment of importance in my life. And now six years later, six years later into my own journey, show yourself, be who you are, be who you're meant to be, which is all of Elsa's arc and her character throughout this entire film. The first film was Elsa shedding the expectations of her past and this film was really Elsa stepping into her future, into her destiny and who she is supposed to be. I have chills just thinking about it. Anna doesn't get the power ballads but she gets really sweet songs that move the story along and really give a sense of what the characters are going through in that moment as well. Olaf's song obviously it's just gonna be incredibly hilarious very funny Josh Gad just kills that every single time 
There's not much more I can say about that. I feel like I say this every time I review a Disney movie, but I really cannot get over how amazing the animation is. And I feel like with every Disney movie, we see it and it's just like, yep, this is it. This is the peak of animation and technology. Oh my God. And then the next film comes out and they somehow go even harder. And I'm just like, and seeing the level of detail and work that went into the costumes. Y'all, you can see, you can see the stitching on their necklines. Elsa's costumes are, <laughs> they're covered in crystals, which I know Elsa might be coming from the spot of like favorite Disney heroine. It's so amazing, just the sheer level of detail. And she has so many costumes. I love how quickly this movie moved without it seeing like it was rushed or like it was forced or anything was skipped. Like they put a lot into this movie for the time frame and it moved fairly quickly the ending was so unexpected and so perfect and so different from anything that we've seen in a Disney film I think it was the excellent most perfect choice for the future of Arendelle and it's the best choice for the forest and what's going to happen there and how those two worlds how they collide how they combine how they collaborate oh my god that's a whole lot of C's there's so much more story to tell here and I think that's one of the really amazing things about Disney they are storytellers and they wrapped up the story and had it end perfectly but we can still go forward so despite my really like connection to let it go as a song I went into this movie as someone that has a tolerance for Frozen not loved it but I tolerated Frozen for the past six years like after seeing this film I am changed as a person I am ride or die for this franchise now Frozen forever Arendelle forever may her flag forever fly so if you are on the fence about seeing this movie if Frozen wasn't even really your bag do it see this movie outside of it being a Frozen sequel outside of it being a Disney movie this is just good storytelling it's an amazing film just across the board is definitely worth your coin just some quick thoughts before we go. Elsa sleeps in a full face of makeup, so I'm gonna stop feeling guilty when I do it accidentally. How did Hans get dragged so much in this film and he wasn't even in it? <laughs> I love Bruni and I would die for them. The water knock is the most terrifying thing I have ever seen in a Disney movie, period. The Avengers need to recruit Elsa. Their parents are dead. Elsa is kind of rude. And like, think about it. She was really belting into the unknown from her balcony like her entire kingdom wasn't trying to sleep. As soon as I saw those flurries in the corner of the screen, I knew my love is not fragile. Come on, Kristoff! Nothing that we've learned in this second film makes me want to punch Elsa's dad in the face less. Thank you so much for joining me for this review. I would love to know your opinions on this movie because I could talk about it forever. I'm probably gonna see it several more times in the movie theater and so I'm going to have a lot more to say. Don't forget to like this video. Please comment, let me know how you feel. Subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. You can also follow me on Instagram at Tiffy Starchild. Thank you so much once again and I'm gonna see you next time.